One year ago, Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich was detained by Russian police. He has been in detention ever since on espionage charges, an accusation that the U.S. and his employer strongly deny. Nick Schifrin has more about the efforts to free him. Last November, the United States made Russia an offer, a trade for two Americans the U.S. labels wrongfully detained, former Marine Paul Whelan and Evan Gershkovich. Russia rejected it. The administration it says it continues to try and find a deal that Russia might accept. In the meantime, Whelan and Gershkovich wait. This week, Gershkovich appeared in court, and for the fifth time, a judge extended his detention. He's accused of acting on behalf of the U.S. government to collect state secrets, the first American journalist facing Russian espionage charges in more than 35 years. The U.S. strongly denies the allegations, as U.S. Ambassador to Russia Lynn Tracy said this week. The accusations against Evan are categorically untrue. They are not a different interpretation of circumstances. They are fiction. Gershkovich moved to Russia in 2017 to work for the Moscow Times before joining the journal in 2022. He loved his work. He loved traveling through Russia, and he has shown remarkable resilience, strength, and even good humor throughout this ordeal. I'm now joined in the studio by Evan's sister, Danielle Gershkovich, and Almar Latour, the publisher of The Wall Street Journal and CEO of Dow Jones. Thank you very much, both of you. Welcome back to the News Hour. Danielle, let me start with you. How's your brother doing? I'm so amazed by him. He still is himself. Um, I look at the courtroom footage and photos, and I st recognize all his little mannerisms. Uh, and uh, he writes me letters. We write letters to each other about once a week, and they're still so full of humor. It's still my little brother. We get to correspond. Um, but I know he works incredibly hard to keep his spirits up. Um, he has a very strict routine for himself. He, he reads, he writes, he meditates, and he works really hard to be able to, yeah, stay. To, to stay healthy, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. What has he managed to tell you about the conditions that he faces? Well, I know that he is in a, in a small cell, um, and he gets about an hour exercise a day. Um, and, uh, you know, he's cut off from his, from his family, from his friends, from, from the world and, and his job that he loves so much. Amal Latour, uh, the conviction rate in Russian courts is higher than 90 percent. Is it possible for Evan to receive a fair trial or will his release necessarily come from some kind of swap? Yeah, I'm afraid that the conviction rate for espionage cases uh, is actually even even higher than that. And so, you know, uh, this trial, as uh, you heard Ambassador uh, uh, the ambassador say just now, um, this is a, a fiction. And, uh, and and so the farcical performance uh, that's taking place uh, would not stop at the pretrial detention. I, I assume that that would continue. Uh, through a trial as well, if a trial indeed uh, takes place, and that uh, you know, we still hope that something can happen before a trial would start. Do you refer to Evan as a hostage? Do you consider him a hostage of the Russian government? Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we're dealing uh, with uh, a, a, a department within uh, the State Department called uh, the Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs uh, that is uh, a, a quarterbacking at least uh, some of the efforts to release Evan, uh, and that name says it all. Um, but even beyond that, uh, that, that designation by the government, this is a, a hostage affair. Uh, we've seen that uh, confirmed again and again. Uh, just the uh, transactional nature of how even uh, Putin himself has addressed this uh, you know, it keeps underscoring that this is a, a, a game and Evan is a pawn in a, in a geopolitical play. Danielle, you're here in D.C. Uh, you're not meeting any officials this week, but do you believe the Biden administration is doing all, it's ca all, all it can to release your brother? Uh President Biden uh, made a promise to our family. Um, this is personal for him. He's going to do whatever it takes. And we know the White House is taking this very seriously. And there's a team of experts working around the clock. Uh, but unfortunately, it's an opaque case. So um, we just have to continue to have faith 
in the government. And in the meantime, we can just continue to keep the spotlight on Evan so he's not forgotten. Omar al let me ask you about some of those details. It is opaque, and this is a government-to-government -government issue, but uh, as I said at the top, there has been a prisoner swap on the table that the U.S. offered to Russia. Putin has said that he's still open to agreement. The U.S. has said it is still trying to find an agreement. Has the administration informed you about any uh, efforts that it is still trying to make to get this swap done? You know, we talk to the administration uh, as often as we can, and they've been, I must say, quite accessible uh, throughout this uh, this very, very long year. Um, and even this week, uh, there was contact, and there will be uh, 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 ongoing contact. And, and so we get updates on how uh, the, the attempts at freeing Evan uh, evolve all the time. And uh, yeah, this goes with uh, with ups and downs, as with any sort of complicated uh, uh, endeavor. Um, and so we've come close uh, at, at, at certain points, uh, and, and we hope uh, one of these days we can cross that threshold. I think the administration has done uh, an, a remarkable job of showing its engagement, uh, showing its commitment, and making a public commitment, including to Danielle and her family. Uh, but uh, ultimately, th this is a, a binary outcome. Either uh, uh, Evan is uh, imprisoned or, or he's free. And so we, we cannot uh, judge ourselves until we get to that point of um, uh, uh, getting Evan out of, out of prison. You said there were contacts this week. Can you uh, reveal any more details about those contacts? No, not specifically. By that, I only mean to say that there are regular interactions, and um, and they take place at sort of regular intervals, just to make sure that uh, we understand how we can be helpful, and uh, that we understand that the government is uh, indeed focused uh, on on Evan as it should be, not just with public commitments, but also with actions, and um, and we have uh, full faith that that will. Uh, be seen through to its uh, uh, hopefully natural conclusion, which will be his release. The journal does not have anyone on the ground in Russia. Many news organizations does not have anyone on the ground in Russia. What do you think the impact of that is? Well, it's the desired impact uh, from an autocratic regime that uh, holds its own people and the truth in extreme disregard. And uh, so there's been a, a, a very active, uh, proactive discouragement of, of proper journalism for the better part of two decades. That's only intensified in, uh, in the past couple of years and really has reached a crescendo in the past uh, year. There are numerous journalists, uh, uh, Russian and foreign journalists, uh, imprisoned in Russia. There are two American journalists uh, uh, currently imprisoned uh, there. And the signal is. Uh, the, the truth is dangerous uh, to the, the Putin regime, and uh, so don't try to offer the truth. Danielle, let me end uh, back to you. Um, I asked about how Evan was doing. How are you doing? How's your family doing? I'm sure you can imagine this has been a very difficult year for us, um, filled with a lot of uncertainty. But whatever we're going through, I know it's harder for Evan. Um, and we just take so much inspiration from his strength. And we have no other choice. We have to keep going. We have to stay positive, optimistic. And um, I know we're going to get him home. And finally, what makes him a good journalist? Um, I just have to smile because it's my brother. I love him so much. And he's just such a passionate, curious, driven person. He loves travel. He loves writing. All of these things came together, and he realized that this is his passion, and we're so proud of him that he got to do that. Hope he can get back to it. Absolutely. Yeah. We all do. Danielle Grishkovich, Omar Latour, thank you very much to you both. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.